is a former uh, MP aspirant of Kitutu uh, Church in North and is here to tell us all about what's happening in the political scene. Apart from that, he is part of the clergy and he's a mediation awareness expert. He'll tell us a little bit about that. But I'm also joined with Ryan Sacco, who's also going to help me steer this uh, conversation on politics. Sacco, right. you want to tell us something before we start? All right, let me introduce myself. Good morning to you. Many thanks once again for joining us. Uh, I know Steph was holding it down, but uh, nice to meet you once again for another amazing week of amazing shows and programming right here at Y254 Channel. My good name is Sankwa, like Stephanie has said. We are about to get into politics, but towards the tail end of this morning's show, we'll be talking about occupational stagnation. What exactly does it take for you to make progress in the professional sector, especially when it comes to majoring in specific careers? Like, for example, today we have somebody on set who is a who actually has experience in politics and also journalism. Talk about being a nurse, a doctor, and so many other professions. Is there a way that you can make progress without, you know, holding it down for one position, maybe for like five, ten years before you now become a certified expert in your field? And what are the obstacles in the professional space? So today we'll be taking a look at that. And like I said, towards the tail end, we'll be joined by very powerful guests, two gentlemen from different uh, expertise experiences as well who will be sharing their insights on that. But away from that, good morning and welcome. This is Joy in the Morning. Back to you, Steph. Okay. So now uh, with that, Sako has uh, introduced what you're supposed to expect. Now I'll uh, give it to Naftali, Mr. Naftali uh, Osvogo. Oh, the, the name Osfungus. is right. Osfungus. <laughs> yeah, Naftali Osfungus. Yes, okay. Oh. Uh, introduce yourself. You are also a med mediation expert, yeah. if I'm not wrong. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah, hello viewers. My name is uh, Naftali Osfungus. Uh, I'm a member of the clergy and I'm also a certified professional mediator. Mm -hmm. uh, a mediator is a new thing in Kenya. Uh, it came about as a result of the Constitution of Kenya 2010, mm -hmm. under Article 159, uh, in regard to judicial authority. Mm -hmm. Now, there is that aspect in uh, Part 2. In exercising judicial authority, the courts and the tribunals uh, shall be guided by the, following, uh, by, by the following principles. C, alternative dispute resolution mechanism, including reconciliation, mediation, arbitration, and the traditional dispute resolution mechanisms shall be promoted subject to clause 3. Now, apart from that normal litigation process, uh, the policies under the Constitution of Kenya gave the people of Kenya an alternative dispute resolution. And, and, and this is now where we find mediators, reconcilers. So for you to become a certified professional mediator, you have to go through a training. Mm -hmm. Like now, I, I underwent a, a, a professional uh, a training through the African Nazarene University, mm -hmm. and I graduated. Uh, and now I'm a, a certified professional mediator. A mediator is an individual uh, who assists disputants okay. uh, to resolve their conflict mm -hmm. uh, by just facilitating. Okay. By, by becoming a neutral party, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so, so that uh, now the disputants will have an opportunity to come up with their own solution, and then once they have come up with a recommendation, they will have a, a final uh, 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 verdict, and this verdict is now deposited at the mediation uh, uh, registrar mm -hmm. at the court, Milmani Law Courts. So I'm also uh, uh, accredited by the Mediation uh, accreditation, uh, accreditation Committee. Okay. Yeah. Quite new. I've also just gotten to learn about it. <laughs> yes. a, as you said, 28 uh, gotten with the 2010 Constitution mm. that was there. And it's interesting because we want to also discuss, uh, you know, uh, the talks on amendment of the Constitution and even the bipartisan talks, which uh, also involve uh, a mediator. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming uh, the role of a mediator is what uh, the former president of Basanjo played. Exactly. Ah, okay. So, so I have, I have a good, a good <laughs> yeah. idea of what it is. So the, there is a, a, di a difference between mediation and a dialogue. Mm -hmm. So when you have a, a neutral party who is a, a 
third party, then it becomes a mediation. Mm -hmm. With Obasanjo now, it was mediation. Okay. But without Obasanjo, these are... A dialogue. Yeah, dialogue. Uh -huh. a, di a, di a dialogue is conversation between two people or two groups. Mm -hmm. apart, apart from what? Mediation. Mediation, there must be a third party, third party who is it. neutral. Ah, okay. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Sakwa, you look yeah. like you want to say something. <laughs> no, I'm just digesting. But uh, Mr. Naftali, it's interesting, you know, I've always had a, a, a problem contrasting between mm -hmm. an arbitrator and an mediator. Maybe perhaps if you can, is it just another maybe ad yeah. adjective or an adverb yeah, to no. describe it? Okay, mm -hmm. the, the, there is the aspect of hyponyms and hyponym. Right. A hyponym mm -hmm. is a word that is more specific than a given word. Okay. Now, mediation has hyponyms. Mm -hmm. Right. Like... Uh, Conciliation, reconciliation, arbitration. arbitration. Yeah. Uh -huh. But these hyponyms stand on their own. Arbitration is not mediation. Uh -huh. When it is arbitration, then it means uh, the, 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 there is the presence of an authority, like now a judge or a magistrate, right. who is giving a verdict. Okay. okay. But with mediation, it, <laughs> it, 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 it's, no, it's not a, a public officer. It is yeah. an individual who is uh, trained to give, uh, to facilitate what yeah. the, the, the process. dialogue, yeah. Okay. okay. But but with arbitration, arbitration is 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 more legal, right? Yeah. But but, but it is also an old alternative alternative dispute resolution mechanism. Right. Uh, and, and you had mentioned reconciliation dialogue. So nice. Uh, it's <laughs> a good scope of understanding now yeah. I've gotten. So yeah. arbitration mainly might maybe have a litigation process. Yeah, no, no. Uh -huh. uh, uh, arbitration is like um, court annexed mediation. Right. It, 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 it must result to a higher authority like a magistrate. A magistrate yeah. must determine this the verdict. verdict. Yeah. But right. with the mediation, the mm -hmm. verdict is from the disputants who okay. come up with their own solution. Mm -hmm. Then now the mediator uh, facilitates right. and gives what? That final settlement right. and deposit. Right. And, uh, and these uh, final uh, settlements mm -hmm. become becomes like an obita dictum. It okay. is not subject to appe appeal. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, yes. uh, with an arbitration, um, does the judge also facilitate, or is it just there to give a verdict? In fact, arbitration now, it is that hearing and determination. So, yeah. the judge hears, then determines. Determine. Then how different is it from the normal court cases? E, yeah. Now, you see, with arbitration, the disputants may maybe say the accuser, and the accused mm -hmm. may face the judge. Mm -hmm with or without their legal uh, cancer. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. So it, 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 it is somehow uh, disoriented from the litigation, mm -hmm. but it is a legal process. Okay. Right. Yeah. You are mm -hmm. giving an authority as an arbiter, a judicial authority. Uh -huh. Yeah. And what's, right. okay, well, I know we're digging into this. So, enough, so mm -hmm. the, there's arbitration, there's reconciliation and there's mediation. Recon uh, reconciliation mm -hmm. is uh, getting two things correspond. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Or uh, re-establishing cordial relations. Maybe right. this party and that party mm -hmm. had some well-defined uh, cordial relations. But because of two things, uh, these cordial relations was dismantled. Mm -hmm. Now you are reconciling them. In right. the fact, reconciliation began, uh, began from... Uh, the, the covenant of the blood of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Apostle mm. Paul asks in the book of First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6, mm -hmm. uh, I say this to shame you. Is it possible that there is nobody among you wise enough to uh, judge a dispute between believers? So Apostle Paul is, uh, is giving you a, 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 a mandate because before you take a brother to court, can you sit down mm -hmm. and reconcile one another? Okay. Then again, he has now brought the, this ministry of reconciliation under 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Reconciliation has, has, has been entrenched in the yeah. Bible as mm -hmm. part of uh, uh, the, the, the covenant of the blood of Jesus Christ, where persuasion is the key. You are yeah. trying to persuade, you are trying to intervene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, intervening for the purposes of bringing about a settlement. Wow. Apart okay. from where? Court. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe right. before Steph digs in, uh, I remember, uh, maybe what are some of the accounts of events that can possibly or potentially lead to um, mediation? Now, for a person who doesn't understand uh, that depth of, you know, oh, these are bipartisan talks, what are they? And then, uh, was it necessary to call for the attention of uh, Olosegunu Basanju now that, you know, these two warring, I don't know if you can say they were warring mm. parties, mm. or in other words, we can say this was a truce. Was it necessary to have his authority? And maybe you can start with what are the, some of the accounts that Thank you lead. very much. So, yep. when you see a mediator anywhere, then it means there is a dispute. A mediator cannot come without a dispute. Okay. So, the, the validity of this dispute is then determined from that dialogue. After the end of the dialogue, it is when now, uh, you are able to judge that there was substantive what uh, d d dispute either okay. between uh, 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 part A and part B. Okay. But there must be a, d a dispute. In the case of Kenya, there was a dispute. There is a dispute. People are arguing. One side claims victory. Another one says this victory was stolen. Mm -hmm. So there is a dispute. These two groups ought to sit down and come up with their own solution okay. so when a mediator is there he facilitates the reason why a mediator should be there uh, you may find uh, some fa factors like now one party is not ready to sit down right. or the other party uh, may be wanting to, to do so a mediator gives a framework or an underlying structure on the events how they w are going to occur mm -hmm. step by step until the mediation is a trained expert okay. in the talks so he can see the, the this party and the, uh, and this part and he can read between the lines to help them come with their own solution okay. right. so what is going on at mm. the bombers of kenya is very important as far as healing is concerned mm -hmm. because and, and uh, you, you know like i i I don't know whether you have uh, heard about Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud came with um, a clinical method mm -hmm. for treating psychopathology, uh, where, whereby uh, there is a dialogue between a patient and a clinical officer. So that conversation between the two people, it is a way of healing. Right. Yeah, people bring their issues mm -hmm. and another, another one. So you, you do what? You balance this interest. And then at the long last, you come up with a verdict by your own, own selves. Okay. okay. Yeah. Interesting. Right. Wow. So now, for as we close the discussion on, <laughs> on you know, what arbitration is, mediation, and everything, you've said that it needs a professional, a certified person. But um, in the case of Kenya, would we say that uh, uh, pres a former president of Basanjo is an expert in? In mediation, because I know he was vet, he was probably chosen by the two leaders. So, would we say that he's qualified? Let me then le, let me say say this. You know, for one to become a mediator, they have to be, uh, and uh, uh, they must have gone a mediation what expertise uh, training. Obasanjo cannot appear in Kenya as a mediator without that. Okay. Like now, Kofi Annan was a mediator. Mm -hmm. You. You see, I, I can be a mediator, but I, I cannot announce. But when you go to the books of records, you will find my name there. Ah, okay. Yeah, we have so many mediators. And, and, and these mediators mm -hmm. have, have been largely drawn from the legal sector and the clergymen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this is where, like now, a, a, me, a member of the clergy mediates so many issues yeah. around the, the ministry. So for, for them now to have that bold uh, and that trait of sincere and steadfast fixed of purpose, mm -hmm. as far as mediation is concerned, they have to be, uh, uh, appear through a mediation training process so, so that they can be uh, given skills and expertise. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. And now coming on to Kenya, how do you see the bipartisan talks going? Because of late, we, we've not had um, sort of a, quarrel between the two sides and it seems like the president and the Azimio leader are agreeing or to some extent from your point of view how do you see it going yeah from my uh, perspective 
you, you see, we began f with altercation. One side was saying this, the other side that. Mm -hmm. But now, as, as days unfold, it's like there is that uh, uh, calmness, this steadiness of mind under stress. So these people, these two groups have agreed to sit down because either one group has seen my issues will be resolved. And this one has also confirmed my issues will be confirmed. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. Whenever there is a dialogue, whenever there is communication through dialogue or conversation, mm -hmm. there is that natural healing. So it is upon Kenyans to be patient and wait for this dialogue process uh, to be completed. And then we will be given a final settlement. And believe you me, this final settlement will be agreed upon the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you okay. see, uh, bef uh, before I hand it over to Sakwa, do you see uh, an event where we'd have something similar to a handshake, what we had and what the f president has, you know, um, completely and totally, uh, you know, said that he won't agree to and he's not uh, ab all about that, mm -hmm. including the deputy president. Also, the opposition leader said he's not uh, for the handshake. So do we see the, an event where we're having something similar to the handshake? It might not be the handshake, but something quite similar to it. Yeah, something quite similar, but not that handshake between Uru and Rai Rai mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. Let me, <laughs> let me hand you over to go before I continue. Uh, interesting, interesting uh, prediction. Uh, hopefully it goes like that. Also, uh, do you feel like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I was having a conversation with a friend uh, discussing on the same topic and they're like, why was the process so delayed? We thought, you know, they were just going to, you know, make calls, uh, let them meet at Bomas, Raila and President, and then have talks. But then it just so turned out that, you know, the President had to use this portal of, let's have this task force led by either uh, a minority leader from the other side and then majority leader from this other side, and then they come together. Why was it necessary to use that format? And not just let's have the president come. Yeah, initially they had said, set up cameras, bring all TV stations and radio, let, let them talk, and then they decide we are done. But then it has turned out now it's, uh, it's like become a game. Uh, recently we saw uh, Ray Lodingo sit on Friday or Saturday, he, he was in Kitengela saying, if they don't agree on the issues that they want, they're definitely going back to the streets again. And then we saw uh, Deputy President Rigadi Gashago say, these people are after something and definitely are not going to give them a chance. They should just sit down and be quiet. It seems like these political temperatures are building up, dying, building, dying, building. Why is it not easier to just, let's make calls, sit down, talk, down, we've agreed. Yeah, now, there, there were two ways. Number one, the president uh, used a, di a different approach. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He wanted the National Assembly uh, to cut out this uh, dialogue be because under Article 94, the National Assembly has been given the mandate by the people of Kenya mm -hmm. to resolve an issue pertaining our people. It mm -hmm. is the National Assembly. Okay. So this is why the President now was advocating because we have both members, uh, Azimio and Kenya Kwanzaa in the National Assembly to form that uh, bipartisan talk, to have a framework representing what? The, the members of parliament. Because uh, parliament represents the diversity of the nation and manifests the sovereignty of the people and exercises mm -hmm. our sovereignty. So right. the president wanted it to be approached from the National Assembly. Okay. On the other hand, uh, the Honorable Raila Odinga wanted it to uh, be discussed outside the parliament. Yeah. And now this, this is where now we have mediation mm -hmm. or dialogue outside parliament. Mm -hmm. So what we, we maybe uh, expect from uh, the bombers of Kenya is mm -hmm. maybe a hybrid, whereby we have members of parliament and technocrats from outside. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, interesting. And this also read from uh, the elections being part of uh, the talks, one of the uh, areas that uh, the Azimio leadership proposed to talk. Uh, you know, so what I'm seeing here uh, that Zimbabwe also had recently had an election and um, the sitting president was given uh, a second term, but the 
the opposition candidate rejected the results and the observer raised questions about the integrity of the election. So when you talk about elections in Africa, something very common in Kenya, matters of integrity, what is the problem? Why is it that there's usually disputes and mm. on matters elections? Now, we have those uh, bare minimum we call the general principles of the electoral system in any nation. So whether it is Zimbabwe or Kenya. So these, these general principles must reflect credibility. What the people wanted to see is credibility. An election that appears to merit belief or acceptance by the people. So if it, it does not appear to merit belief or acceptance, then one person uh, may become agitated or one group may become agitated mm -hmm. and wanted to resolve these issues all through an alternative dispute re resolution. So, like now, you, you have uh, uh, mm -hmm. spoken about, about this Zimbabwe. It, 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 it seems like one group of the political class uh, is dissatisfied with the elections. Mm -hmm. And so, if they don't see any credibility, then they may want an alternative dispute resolution because they, mm -hmm. they must be heard. Yeah, okay. they must be heard. They must be heard. Mm. All right. Yeah. Uh, before I hand it yeah. over to Sakwa again, and we have some few minutes before we close, I want us to touch on the constitutional amendment, something that has been making headlines for the past uh, weeks. Uh, we're talking about hits and misses as Kenya marks 13 years of 2010 constitution as highlighted here. And activists and politicians uh, say it is time to review Supreme Law, claim it has been adulterated. And yesterday, PL, uh, PLO Lumumba was speaking, saying that he's going to collect signatures all around the country so that, uh, you know, they get a chance to amend the constitution. And this is the fourth time that... Uh, the fourth attempt of the constitution trying to be amended since uh, it came to be. So, you know, looking at that and some of the areas of represent, uh, some of the areas, targeted areas include representation and devolution. Um, what, what do you think about it? Yeah, uh, there is a provision in the constitution for amendment of the constitution. Mm -hmm. But there are those provisions which cannot be amended by a popular initiative. Okay. There are also those pro provisions which cannot be amended by a parliamentary initiatives. So mm -hmm. it, is, it is defined clearly under uh, chapter uh, 16 of the constitution. Mm -hmm. So if a Kenyan or a group of Kenya wants some aspect of the constitution to be amended, then there is that legal process or th there is that avenue created by the constitution. So there is no harm for us to discuss where, where uh, I mean, on which aspects mm -hmm. we need to amend. Mm -hmm. There is no harm. So, uh, for this particular areas that I have mentioned, representation and devolution, is it, is it one of the areas that can be amended? It and why do you think yeah. these uh, two areas have been highlighted? Yeah, you see now, uh, I, I saw from a report uh, uh, from the conference which uh, was uh, finished by the devolution conference that they want some counties to be divided so so that we may increase our counties mm. so uh, uh, for me it will advance the self-determination that mm. sovereignty of the people because if we have lesser units than it means we will uh, be able to uh, include ourselves in that public participation and in that management of our public affairs. So w with uh, us having more counties, mm -hmm. I will say I it is uh, something which is sensational okay. in, uh, in appearance and the training in, uh, in effect. Finally, yeah. uh, sure. will that not increase the level of corruption because we've had devolution, uh, which was introduced by the Constitution, but uh, looking at some of the reports that have been written is that it has increased corruption levels. So if we continue to increase counties, won't that you know, increase <laughs> the rate of corruption in Kenya, which is something that we have clearly not been able to deal with? So for, for you to increase the counties, we will increase the level of corruption. I will show you if we do not increase 
the counties. We will re reduce the, <laughs> the corruption. I, I, I am not sure. <laughs> I'm just looking at the situation now. Mm. I, I mean, if you know, um, if you have a situation without solving a problem and then you increase the number, it will be harder to handle. That's my two cents. You see, we, uh, let, me, let me help you this. Whenever you see a state office or a public office, then th this is a public trust. This is a, po a public uh, trust. Every individual herein has that social force binding themselves for the causes of action demanded by this force. They must be uh, having an undivided and an unbroken completeness. Mm -hmm. they, they must have accountability, integrity, and the transparency. So it, it's not about whether we have uh, big institutions. It is about do we care our integrity? Do we care our qualities, positive or negative, which render ourselves valuable and desirable while we are in the office? So it's not about that. It is about the individual and that competence and that suitability and that display. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me allow Sakwe to interject before we right. come to a close. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, recently, we just finished uh, we're celebrating 10 years of devolution. Would you say maybe some of the conversations and some of the highlights of that are probably the ones that have brought to light this conversation of the amendment of the, uh, the Constitution? And then also, if it were to be pushed to a referendum, what are some of the authorities that would steer these conversations towards that? And you had tried to mention, uh, Stefan highlighted the question of the story about the gender representation and devolution. Maybe what are some of the factors that could steer towards that conversation? Yeah, number one is public participation. Mm -hmm. Participation of the people. Participation of the people is one of the national values and principles of governance. So we cannot have a, a process like amending of the constitution without public participation because that amendment must result from the people. Mm -hmm. So if we this, uh, I, I, I mean, uh, disorient this process from the people mm -hmm. themselves, then it becomes bogus. For us to give it credibility, we must go through people participation. So after people have participated, then we have these uh, other now legal frameworks where we go to the counties, where we go to the uh, MCAs, then to the National Assembly, this process must appear to merit belief and acceptance as far as uh, the legal procedure is concerned. Because if there is a flop in one of the areas, then a person may institute court proceedings at the High Court, claiming that there was a denial or an infringement in some place. And then we may have the court now doing, doing what? Nullifying uh, the the process. So it must go through the legal procedures in the right way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Quite right. interesting. Uh, we have learned quite a lot. Thank you yeah. very much, Mr. Naftali Oth Vunguz, uh, who is a clergy and also uh, a mediation expert. And we've gotten to know what, media what a mediation expert uh, exactly does. And uh, it's, if you're interested, I mean, that's a career that you can definitely pursue. I'll let Sakwa close up uh, oh. this segment before oh. we go on to career. All right. Uh, I've just had a question pop up in my mind. Can I train to be an arbitrator or a mediator? Is it possible? Absolutely. Or? Absolutely. Oh, it's open to anyone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I thought Lazimbo was in law school, uh, 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 LSK. You, you, know. you need only to have uh, like uh, the highest certificate of your your education. My academia. Yeah, may, okay. may, maybe KCSE, diploma, okay. degree, whichever. Right. Yeah. And right. then you pay the school fees. All right. Yeah. So, uh, for example, like for somebody who's been watching, is there a way they can reach out to you, maybe consult you yeah. on this? Yeah. Uh, you so have like social media, a link, a number? You can uh, reach me through 0711 All right. Then oh. on Facebook, Osfungus Nyamongo. All right. Yeah, on Twitter, yes. Was fungus in your All right. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm being told that we still have more time mm. that we can come back and discuss one or two things. So All we right. will definitely have uh, Mr. Naftali come and shed some light on some other areas that have been making politics in Kenya. We take a short break. We'll be right back. <laughs>